It honestly doesn't get any bigger for Lucas Silva and Sevilla. They've got a massive La Liga game against Atletico Madrid, a cup semi-final against Espanyol, and also a Champions League round of 16 game against Chelsea. It is going to be one hell of an action-packed episode. Anyways, first things first, I know you guys were really frustrated with the haircut I gave Lucas Silva in the previous episode. It was just some fun, some banter to try out something different. But anyways, we're going to go to a neat haircut style which looks pretty decent so for a few weeks or so we're going to be using that again if you guys have any suggestions put them down in the comment section below but anyways as i said today's going to be one hell of an episode for you guys so if you guys are excited for today's one make sure to drop a like on this video let's smash out 500 likes and if you guys do smash out the like target i'll get you guys an episode this sunday as well for tomorrow i've planned a throwback fifa 14 career mode video just for fun anyways as you guys can see the league table right now La Liga the race for top four is definitely heating up as we are in third place comfortably situated but we're actually only seven points off the top of the league so you know what maybe a few results go our way and we can get ourselves in to the title race for now we've got ourselves into a massive La Liga game against Atletico Madrid at home after this game we're going to get into the cup competitions like the one against Espanyol and Chelsea but for now, we've got to focus on this one against Atleti. It's great to see that I've established a spot in the starting 11. Lucas Silva is now pretty much undisputed starter for Sevilla, which is great because he's now starting pretty much every game and he's probably going to start in the cup game and even against Chelsea as Lucas Silva does really well to win the ball back from Koke. First highlight for him in this one. But now a chance though for Atletico Madrid and we know they're a good side. And they definitely want to be getting a victory against us to maybe secure that third spot or at least fight for it. As here's Koki on the ball. Plays in a great pass to Diego Costa who gets the shot off but his shot goes wide. 42 minutes into this game. Definitely looks like Atletico are coming into this one with more intent than us. But now good link up play between Joaquin Correa and Vasquez. But Atleti do intercept it. Koke now on the ball but really well defended there by Lucas Silva. Now generating an attack. But he gets the ball stolen off him by Koke. And that was really weird but again great work rate from Lucas Silva to win the ball back and there goes Sevilla again on the attack as he has Lucas Silva on the ball Vasquez back to Lucas Silva an opportunity now for Sevilla Vasquez gets the ball from Lucas Silva and he passes it to Ben Yedder who just had to put that one into the back of the net and he wasn't going to miss from there as Sevilla take the lead against Atletico Madrid in the 53rd minute of this one and it was a brilliant goal and again fantastic work rate shown there by Lucas to win the ball back after losing out to Koke and then he of course had some good link up play with his teammates to finally find Vasquez and there you go Ben Yedda gets himself the goal that's a big chance now for Atletico Madrid as Costa rattles the crossbar 77 minutes into this one it does look like we will be getting away with all three points but anything can happen in this one and here you go a massive mistake from Lucas Silva that he's going to remember for quite a while. And then the cross comes in from Atletico and Mercado seems to be clearing that one properly. No foul at all. But the referee somehow thinks that is a penalty. That is daylight robbery. That wasn't a penalty, guys. 100% that wasn't a penalty. Have a look at that again. How the hell has the referee given that as a pen? We've honestly been robbed. In the comment section, let me know who would you blame for this goal that Atleti have scored now or Sevilla have conceded. Would you guys blame Lucas Silva for that, you know, stupid play to lose the ball? Or would you blame the freaking referee? I certainly would blame the referee because that was a perfect header there from Mercado. I have no idea what was going on in the ref's mind. At least now in the 85th minute, we're still trying to go forward, but Gabi does intercept Lucas's cross. But again, fabulous work rate from the Sevilla team as Hugo Mayo gets the ball back but then what a chance from the former Barcelona B or the La Masia graduate as he couldn't score there though Sandro misses a golden chance and that is how the game comes to an end very frustrating end to this one because certainly I believe that we were the better side at least towards the end we had more chances and all but then Atleti got that stupid penalty oh man so frustrating but a match rating of 7.5 for Lucas Silva and he was actually really good in this one and he was actually more attacking than, you know, defending in this game because Atleti just gave him that much space. So still very frustrating that we couldn't get the three points, but it does seem like Lucas Silva's performances, even though he makes the occasional defensive error, has not gone unnoticed as it seems like he is going to get the call up for the upcoming Brazil friendly games against Mexico and of course Iceland. 
it seems like Sky Sports have got some internal news and I don't know, they might be right about this. Lucas Silva could be playing or making his debut for Brazil very, very soon, which I'm really hyped about. Anyways, we cannot let that distract us as we've got some huge games coming up now for Sevilla. This one being against Espanyol in the semi-finals of the Copa del Rey. And the fact that the first leg ended in a one all draw and Espanyol have the away goal advantage means that we absolutely need ourselves to get a goal in this one. I'm again starting out as a left back and this time around my fitness levels isn't full which is not good but I had to start this game. There is no way I'm sitting out of this one. It is a cup semi-final. I want to play. I want to help my team get to the next round and that is exactly what I'm trying to do. As Lucas Silva now on the ball whips in a solid cross but Diego Lopez gets his hand to it. We were the aggressive team, at least early on. We were the team needing the goal, so we had to be forward. We had to make chances because otherwise, Espanyol would book their spot in the finals and make it an all-Catalan final. Although Pablo Piatti had a chance to do exactly that, thankfully, Sergio Rico made a fabulous save. I was nowhere in that attack. I mean, what was I doing defensively there? But luckily, going forward, I do provide in this instance as Vasquez plays in a fabulous pass to me. Ben Yedder back now into Lucas Silva, who decides to smash this one and honestly... He came really close to getting his first goal in, of course, his professional career. But sadly, it just wasn't to be. But we could still see a chance now for Lucas Silva and Sevilla. As Lucas does really well to get away from a couple of players. Both find its way to Vasquez. Back to Lucas. A cleverly done touch from Lucas Silva to find space to get the shot off. But then again, Diego Lopez makes the save. Another fabulous save. Lucas Silva could have easily gotten himself his first goal and now he actually gets himself another opportunity to score. Lucas decides to strike this one, another save from Diego Lopez. Honestly, Lucas has gotten really unlucky in the last few moments as he's had so many chances to score but yet Diego Lopez has pulled off some fabulous saves as now we might be able to create a chance. Here's Arana now with the ball, finds Lucas Silva who decides to cut this one back but David Lopez does get the ball away as the score remains nil-nil. Espanyol somehow holding on and here again is Lucas Silva again at the heart of the attack for Sevilla. Still Lucas gets past one brilliantly there with the ball roll as Vasquez puts in a very nice cross indeed but Lopez collects it. It's been all Sevilla in this first half but now in the second half we could see a chance for Espanyol. Zedan Shakiri crosses the ball in and Gerard Moreno smashes it in. What just happened? We were dominating them. And suddenly from one attack, Espanyol have taken the lead. Although this doesn't really affect the game much because we still need to score. It's, it's unbelievable. We've literally dominated this Espanyol side and bombarded them with attack after attack. Yet it's them in the lead. Things just aren't going our way as they have another chance to potentially double up their lead. Thankfully, Sergio Rico makes the save, giving us some hope. But there was no hope because the final whistle had come and we've been knocked out of the Spanish Cup in the semi-finals. And honestly, that is just disappointing because I did not expect that. We were the better side throughout most of the game. In fact, you know what, throughout the game, they had like one chance and they took it. So frustrating, man. I end with a match rating of 7, but we've been knocked out from one competition. And it's just so disappointing. We've still got a lot to play for, so we can't let our heads drop. We've got the Champions League round of 16 game, where honestly, we don't really have that great of a chance. But it's only a 1-0 deficit to Chelsea. Anything can happen at home in Sevilla. So we've got to believe, we've got to try and get the result against Chelsea. I am, of course, sitting out of this one against Malaga. We do get a 1-0 win, which is great. Also, good to see the manager is happy with Lucas's defensive play. And as you would have noticed, lately Lucas has been much better defensively. And I think he's worthy of the praise he's getting now from his manager. He's certainly improved in that department. Hopefully against Chelsea, he can put in a solid performance against the likes of Hazard and Willian. Hazard versus Lucas Silva or Willian versus Lucas Silva is definitely going to cause Lucas a lot of problems. Anyways, Lucas Silva has unlocked a skilled dribbling trait which could be very, very vital because of how good it is. It's one of my favourite traits and now Lucas Silva does have that which is great. It'll help him get past opponents in an easier fashion. But anyways, something that's important, you guys get to decide Lucas Silva's kit number. I've seen a lot of you guys putting in suggestions for me to change Lucas Silva's kit number. So go down there in the comment section right now. Let me know what kit number we should give Lucas Silva. So yeah, let me know in the comment section. We can switch it to any kit number. Now that Lucas is a starter at Sevilla, makes sense giving him the kit number he wants. Anyways, these are how the other Champions League games are, you know, going about. Man United have beat Barcelona, which is interesting. Chelsea now beating 
Sevilla, the Premier League clubs, are actually doing really well apart from Liverpool. Even Spurs have beaten Atleti, which is interesting to see. But most importantly, it is time for our game. It is time for Sevilla versus Chelsea. This is going to be played at home. A massive opportunity for Lucas Silva to progress and play in a Champions League quarterfinals. He's made his debut in this competition, but now he needs to perform. He absolutely needs to give his 100%. And so does the entire Sevilla team. This isn't going to be a cakewalk. This Chelsea side, five at the back, are absolutely ruthless. And we saw what happened last time. Hazard was just unbelievable. A Champions League anthem going around. And this is it. Lucas Silva getting an opportunity to face off against some of the world's best players like Hazard. Let's see if he can deal with the quality those kind of players possess. Regardless, I'm sure y'all are aware of the scenario of this game. A goal gets us to extra time. A couple of goals sees us through to the next round. We cannot afford to concede to this Chelsea side. Morata on the ball, though. Chelsea having the first attack. I told you guys, this Chelsea side's attacking capability kind of seems unmatched to what I've come up against so far. They're just so, so good. As William now, I'm caught out of position once again. As William now, utilizing that pace, I try and get back. Eventually, I have to commit a foul to get William off the ball. Dealing with William and Hazard was just... I don't want to do it again. Let's just say that Hazard and William were constantly interchanging positions. So that just caused more problems. It just shows Lucas still has a lot to learn in the left-back position. So let's hope he can adapt quickly and, you know, get to that level. As, as you can see, perfect example here of Hazard switching sides that causes more problems as Hazard is now through on goal he can't get the shot off properly as Sergio Rico makes the save 42 minutes into this game and we barely had a single chance against Chelsea it's half time and there's and something needs to happen because right now this team is in shambles there's no way we're progressing to the next round of the Champions League in this manner we just got knocked out of the Spanish Cup no way we're getting knocked out of the Champions League as well in like a week or so within a week that's not happening we've got to fight we've got to try and get ourselves back into this game but it just isn't seeming likely as Lucas Silva works really hard to get the ball off Pedro and then plays it really well to Joaquin Correa but still we just weren't able to create any sort of clear-cut chances Ben Yedder went completely missing again another good challenge there from Lucas Silva Lays it off to Vasquez. Now some good link-up play maybe as the ball finds its way to Mercado who is now playing pretty much a striker. Sandro finds Lucas. Now ball is with Joaquin Correa. Now Lucas puts in a solid cross but there was no one attacking it. And there you go. 75 minutes into this one. Score remains nil-nil and the scoreline right now will see Chelsea through to the next round as Lucas plays in a good pass to Sarabia who crosses this one in. Sandro, what the hell was he doing there? I have absolutely no idea and unfortunately it's heartbreak for Sevilla. They have endured a really difficult week. Knocked out of the Spanish Cup. Knocked out of the Champions League. Now only La Liga is left for them and even that competition, they, it just seems like they can't be winning it because of how good Real Madrid have been. So maybe it is going to be a trophy less season for Lucas Silva and his Sevilla teammates. 7.1 match rating for Lucas. I thought he was good in this one but... The team couldn't win and it was very disappointing indeed. 33 touches for Lucas Silva but I don't know. It was such a disappointing night. But after that game, we had huge news coming out of the Sevilla dressing room. Apparently the Sevilla team's morale is in shambles and there has been a fight in the Sevilla dressing room. And Lucas Silva was involved in it. This is actually breaking news and could really cause problems in Lucas Silva's career. The fact that the Brazil call-up may be soon... We've got to be careful. Next episode, you guys will find out the full story about the fight, what happened, who were involved and all that good stuff. It's going to be an exciting one. But for now, we're going to be ending off the episode on that note. It has been a bit of a struggle this episode, getting knocked out of two competitions. Yeah, real struggle. We couldn't win a single game in this episode. Very disappointing indeed. Hopefully next episode we can bounce back. But after the fight, you never know, the coach might actually drop me. Regardless, next episode, Valencia, Leganes, and I'll just show you guys the rest of the games we have in La Liga. We do have some cracking games coming up soon, like this Barcelona one, which could be in the next episode. Real Madrid as well, yet to play. We could still actually challenge for the league title, but it doesn't seem likely, to be honest. But the most important thing right now is to try and calm things down. The team's morale is in shambles, and the fight isn't going to help. We're going to see what happens regarding Lucas Silva's situation in the next episode. Hopefully it ain't too serious. Let me know your thoughts on that in the comment section below. 
And that is it for today's video. It's been a bit of a disappointing one in terms of results, but hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. If you guys have had, make sure to drop a like. You guys can smash out 500 likes. That'd be insane. And if you are new around here, make sure to subscribe for more FIFA 18 career mode content. And I will see you guys very soon for another episode of this series.